Hi everyone, this is Hannah from becomingwhoyouare.net. I recently read a great book called The Power of Ted by David Emerald, and I wanted to create a brief video series to share some of the key ideas from this book with you. The Power of Ted is a short and powerful book, as I said, by David Emerald, who is a coach, speaker, and facilitator. The book is in the form of a fable, and it's not about the TED Talks, which is what I originally thought it was about when I first heard the title, but it's about something called the Empowerment Dynamic, which is abbreviated to TED or TED. The main character in the story begins by lamenting everything that's going wrong in his life at that time, so his wife has just left him, he's found out that he is infertile, and as he sits in front of the sea to think, he finds himself sitting next to a mysterious character called Ted. Over the course of the book, Ted enlightens our protagonist about what he calls the victim orientation and the creator orientation. It's a quick read, it's also a pretty easy and entertaining read because it's in the form of a story, and it's one of those books that you'll probably want to go back to again and again because there is so much useful information and so many ideas that we can apply to our lives. In this video, we're going to look at what David Emerald calls the dreaded drama triangle, what it is and why it matters. The drama triangle is a way of relating to the world. In the book, this is called an orientation, and it describes the various roles that we can take within this orientation. At the top here, we have the role of victim. The victim feels like things happen to them that are largely out of their control, which leaves them feeling helpless and disempowered. As David Emerald says, at the core of any victim, you'll find the psychic death of a dream. And this is a really powerful image. All victims have experienced loss in the form of a thwarted dream or desire, whether that's to do with their health, their identity, or even their sense of reality, for example, if they find out that someone has been lying to them. An important distinction to make is the difference between being the victim of an experience or event and how we relate to that experience or event. Victims exist, and David Emerald isn't trying to sugarcoat the fact that bad things happen to everybody at some point or another. What he says really counts, however, is how we relate to these experiences and what we make of them. Across from the victim, we have the persecutor role. The persecutor is interesting because it can be a person, but it can also be a situation or an event. For example, it might be a spouse, a parent, a friend, a boss. It can also be an illness or a situation like bankruptcy, a natural disaster, like an earthquake. You probably get the picture. The persecutor is the perceived cause of the victim's woes. And note the use of the word perceived here. The victim might view the persecutor as a source of their hardship and misery, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. The final piece of the drama triangle is the rescuer, which can also be called the saviour. The rescuer intervenes on behalf of the victim to, as the name suggests, attempt to rescue them from the persecutor. Like the persecutor, the rescuer can be a person, or it can also be a situation or event, such as winning the lottery, or even something like an addiction. This role is tricky because initially it might not seem like there's anything wrong with being a rescuer, and their intentions are usually pure. What happens with rescuers, however, is that they reinforce the victim's attitude of poor me. They reinforce their victimhood. And by trying to fix things for them, they usually end up leaving the victims feeling more disempowered and helpless. These roles are interchangeable. Someone who starts off in the victim role can end up behaving like a persecutor in the eyes of other people. For example, if they respond with passive aggressive behavior. As another example, someone who starts off in a rescuer role can end up feeling like a martyr, which is a form of victimhood. Emerald describes these three roles as symbiotic and says that they dance together as a trio, either within the perspective of one person or acted out as a multi-person relationship dynamic. So what's the issue with this orientation? Surely there are some people who are victims, who are persecutors, and is being a rescuer really all that bad? Well, there are two key reasons why the victim orientation isn't especially helpful or productive. 
The first is that when we're in the victim orientation, we are coming from a place of reaction. Not only that, we believe we're reacting to a problem and trying to problem solve when we're really reacting to our anxiety about that problem. It's our anxiety that motivates us to take action. So when our anxiety goes away, so does our motivation to act. As a consequence, we never end up solving the problem that provoked the anxiety in the first place. And so the problem re-emerges further down the line. It's a little like taking a painkiller for a recurring headache without stopping to consider the underlying cause of the headache itself. The victim reacts to try and make things go away right now, while the creator knows that eliminating problems is usually a long-term process. And this is something that we're going to look at in more detail over the next couple of videos. Any recurring issue in life is usually a sign that we're in the victim orientation and therefore never solving the root problem. As frustrating as that can feel, once we realize that, we have the chance to change it. The other issue with the victim orientation is that all three roles here are based on fear. Both persecutors and victims act out of fear of loss of control, while rescuers fear loss of purpose. If you can relate to this idea of viewing the world through a victim orientation, you are definitely not alone. As David Emerald points out, the victim orientation will always be part of us because it's part of our primal makeup. When our ancestors were faced with threats, they had to react to the world around them in order to survive. In modern society though, this kind of fight, flight or freeze reaction is no longer necessary and we can choose how we want to respond. I'm going to be talking about that more in the next couple of videos. In the meantime, however, I highly recommend checking out the book The Power of Ted by David Emerald. In there, you'll find a lot more in-depth look at this framework, the story, and additional resources that will be really helpful. Thanks, Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been interesting. If you have any questions about any of the content in this video, please feel free to head over to becomingwhoyouare.net and get in touch with me there. I hope you have a lovely day.